Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we're at. If you take a look, this is the road from Rostov on Don all the way up there to Moscow, right? About 15 hours in a car. Now, I love the fact that the roadblocks and the action is on Google Maps right now, right? Those are roadblocks of the Russian forces that are trying to stop Yegeny Prigozhin from marching on Moscow with 25,000 men at least. The word on the street is that uh, elements of the LPR and the DPR, right, the Donetsk People's Republic forces and the Luhansk People's Republic forces, who have been treated by the Russian army as second-class citizens, frankly, as well they should, right, these, these murderous bastards. But when we look here, now if this is true, and I think we have every reason to believe that it is, as well as there are reports of defections of other battalions and certainly squads of Russian regular forces abandoning their positions to join this march on Moscow, this march that Prigozhin is calling a march for justice, not that a war criminal murdering pig like he has any idea what justice is, but it's good for Ukraine, right? As the wolves devour each other for a change instead of the lambs that live next door. Now, um, if you take a look, let's see if I can zoom in here on this map a little bit, because we had a report about... Uh, two hours ago, that he was in uh, Voronezh, which is right around here someplace, right where all this, this red is, but he is through here. He's up here at Lepetsk now. Now here's the gig. There's no land forces in Russia that can stop him. They, they're not there. The entire Russian army is on the, the front line in Ukraine what's left of it. That means the only way that the Russians are going to stop him, the only way Putin is going to stop him is with air power. Well, apparently, Mr. Prigozhin liberated some anti-aircraft systems from Rostov-on-Don, and we've got unverified reports. I want to stress that these are unverified, but they come from good sources. He's down to an Su-35 jet, an Su-25 jet, four attack helicopters, and at least one troop-carrying helicopter, right? So some Russian, Russians killing Russians. That's what this is, Russians killing Russians. And it's a lot better than them killing Ukrainians, I'll tell you that. So he's here at Lepetsk. He's about, that puts him about six hours outside of Moscow. By tomorrow morning, either Yevgeny Prigozhin and the Wagner troops will be dead, or Putin, Gerasimov, and Shoigu will be hanging from a lamppost in Red Square. That's a very likely outcome of this conflict here. The only hope, and I do not mean to be alarmist, this is a very unlikely thing that could happen. But from the beginning of this conflict, Putin has been threatening nuclear strikes. A four to seven kiloton device would eliminate the Wagner forces and irradiate about six square kilometers of Russia. Um, and that's the average size of a, a Russian tactical nuke, is my understanding. Now, if Putin does this, the outcome of that is, is going to be awful for him, for everybody, for the world. But at this point, if Putin is still the man who wants to rule Russia, I don't see that he has any other option than to try a strike like that against Wagner. The idea that this war, this awful nightmare war could end with Russians killing Russians on Russian soil and leaving Ukraine to go fight each other might just convince me 
that there is some justice in this world. Stay tuned.